Each one of these candles represents a different theme of Advent and remembering what Christ is to us. He is hope, He is peace, He is joy, and He is love. And when we celebrate Christ, these are all gifts of God to each one of us. And so today we're going to talk about how He is God's love to us. 1 John 4, 7-21 through 21. is what we're going to read today. 1 John 4, starting at verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. We know that we live in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him, and He in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment, because in this world we are like Him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. There's a lot going on in there. It really kind of focuses on how we have to love one another, but there's a few parts in there where it says, you know, the reason why we love one another is because God loved us first. And that's what we're going to focus on today. The Bible tells us what love is, but so does the world. The world that we live in, the air that we breathe, it has its own idea about what love is. And uh, if you Google love, you'll find all kinds of different things about what love is. I just have a few of them here for you. Um, There's some songs that say what love is. So we have Pat Benatar, love is a battlefield. How about another one there? Okay, love is a losing game. That's uh, that's from Amy Winehouse. She was a a very talented, award-winning musician. And this was her last single before she uh, had too much to drink and didn't wake up the next day. All right, and all you need is love, according to the Beatles, a song that many of you, I imagine, are familiar with. So there's lots of songs that talk about love. Let's see what else we have here. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Who recognizes that quote? Okay, a few. Okay, good, because this is, this is from a, a movie called Love Story. I've never actually seen it, but this, this uh, line always stood out to me. Love means you never have to say you're sorry. I, I don't get that, but apparently people think that. So let's uh, see what else we have here. Okay, if you're, if you're from another religion, like if you're a Buddhist, for example, love is a fleeting emotion to reach true nirvana. One must know themselves and forsake love for it breeds contempt. All right, so if you're a Buddhist, then love is kind of a bad thing. Buddhists in general, you want to kind of push away all of your desires of any kind because those are bad and that means that will make you suffer and so we want to get rid of those. So love is apparently one of those. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, what is love? Love is the seventh sense of human that destroys all the six senses and makes the person nonsense. Okay, so some people are kind of cynical about love. It's kind of 
something that uh, people have been burned by, and they kind of have some negative ideas about it. Let's see, a couple more here. Love is my religion. Hmm. I think there's a lot of people out there today who would say this or something like this. You know, if we could all just get along and if we could all just be nice to each other all the time, then, then we'd live in this utopia, this perfect paradise. And, and if only we could do that. I think that people make love their religion a lot. Let's see. Oh, love is the magic that makes two hearts beat as one. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Love is spending the rest of your life with someone you want to kill and not doing it because you'd miss them. Uh, right? Okay, some people think that's what love is. Let's, I think I have a couple more here. Falling in love is like jumping off a really tall building. Your brain tells you it's not a good idea, but your heart tells you you can fly. So again, kind of that love just kind of clouds your judgment and makes you do things you otherwise wouldn't do. All right, okay, Nicholas Sparks. Love is like the wind. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Love is a feeling. It's something you feel, according to Nicholas Sparks, the author of The Notebook and a lot of other romantic movies and books like that. Okay, this is what the world says love is, or just a few things that the world says it is. We, we all look for love. It's something that we seek. We, we need it. It's, it's a need that we have in our soul. And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, we, we do look for it and we do need it. We tend to look for it in all the wrong places, don't we? We look for it in pretty faces or in kisses or hugs, and sometimes we get kind of close. We look for it in marriage or family or friendships or animals, things like that. We, we all need that acceptance and that affirmation. We need to belong somewhere where people love us and appreciate us for who we are. Proverbs 19.22 says, What a man desires is unfailing love, better to be poor than a liar. We all have that desire for unfailing love. The Bible says Jesus Christ is God's gift of love to us. He himself is God's gift of love to all of us. Verse 9 again. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Okay, so at the beginning, the beginning of the story, a lot of you are familiar with it, we sinned against God when Adam and Eve ate from the tree. So everything was great with us and God. We, we had a perfect love relationship with Him, but then when we disobeyed God, it severed that. We turned away from God. And we all, we all sin. We can't just blame Adam and Eve. We all sin. We all participate in it. Romans 5.12, Just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and this way death came to all men, because all sinned. So we can't just blame them. We all participate in that too. And this sin, it broke everything. When you're separated from God, things go wrong. Things are not the way they're supposed to be. And so our bodies are broken, our minds are broken, our relationships are broken, society is broken. Wherever you can look and point, things aren't the way they're supposed to be anymore because of sin. Now, when something breaks in your house, what do you do with it? Usually, you throw it away, don't you? God could have thrown away the broken world, but instead he loved us. We throw things away that break. That's that's what we do. God didn't throw us away. Could have been so easy for God to say, you know what, I'm just not going to bother with all that. Let's just get rid of this one and let's, let's start again. Let's try it again. 
But he didn't do that. And Jesus Christ is the ultimate example of God saying, I'm not going to throw this world away. I'm going to invest in it. I'm going to join them. And I'm going to save it. That's what Jesus is. Is God ultimately saying, I'm not throwing this world away. It means too much to me. I love this world, the people in it. Like it was read just at the beginning of our service, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. Jesus came to us because God loves us. It's as simple as that. When he could have easily thrown us away. So all of this brokenness that we have, Jesus is going to fix it. Little, little baby Jesus in the manger, God's going to fix it. That's what that means. So think of the brokenness that you wrestle with. We all have different kinds of brokenness that especially affects us. So your sadness, your emptiness, the longings that you have, the doubts, the questions, the pains. This is all part of the brokenness. Jesus is here to fix it. This is very exciting. Because all of this stuff that weighs us down, that troubles us, that concerns us, Jesus is going to fix it. In verse 9 it says, The Father gave up His Son to fix everything. He gave up his son. It wasn't like you can borrow him for a while. He had to give up his son. Think about, for those of you who are parents, think about how much you love your children. Think about having to give them up. That's unimaginable, isn't it? Now imagine willingly doing that. Imagine willingly doing that for somebody who hates you. That's what the father did. He gave up his only son for us who turned away from God in sin. That's amazing. That's how much God loves. And it wasn't like God the Father forced Jesus into this. I don't want to give you that impression either. Jesus went willingly. He loved us too. It wasn't just the Father. It was Jesus himself. He's saying, I'll I'll go, I'll do it. Jesus said... No one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. So Jesus didn't come unwillingly. He loved us too. We in our sinful hearts, we don't truly love God. We like to think that we do, but really it's very imperfect love that we have for God. Ultimately, we in in our sinful hearts, we love ourselves. That's really our bottom line. If we're honest with each other, that's really what we're about. We love ourselves. And we'll love God insofar as he fits into what we want. We don't love God for who he is. We, We love God for what we can get out of him. That's not real love. But that's pretty much how we would love God. We want the good things that he gives, but we just want to stay on his good side just enough so that we can get that good stuff, and then we'll leave him be. So we want to be happy, healthy, wealthy, and we want to have that ticket to heaven. And so, Lord, what do I have to do to be happy, healthy, and wealthy and have that ticket to heaven? I'll do just that much, and then we'll call it good. That's, that's like us. By contrast, when Jesus came to this world, he showed us a love that was not just for his own advantage. His whole life was sacrifice 
and service and carrying a cross for us. He denied himself entirely. Verse 10, this is love. Not that we love God, because we really don't, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So even though we kind of just have this token love for God, insofar as we get something out of it, God actually loved us enough to give himself entirely in ways that we can barely understand. So God's love, I mean, forget about what everybody else says love is. Forget about what we think love is. Let's just put that out of our minds. The Bible says love, God's love anyways, is sacrificing to save. When we make sacrifices to help somebody, particularly people who cannot help themselves, that's love. 1 John 3.16 This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. This is the example. When we talk about loving people, or when most people talk about loving people, we just think about just being nice to each other. Real love is laying down your life for somebody. That's love. That's a little more than we're willing to give, isn't it? At least most of the time. God's love is not feelings or sentiment, but actively caring for our well-being. When God loves us, he doesn't just feel things for us. He actively does stuff to save us. Love is what you do. It's not what you say. And God's love is something we can see every day. We can see it. It's not like God's just saying, hey, I love you, and we say, oh, that's great. No, we can see God's love every day. When there's food in your cupboards, God loves you. When you go from one place to another and you're safely there, God loves you. When you look around and you see people smiling at you because they care about you, God loves you. We can see God's love around us every day. We think that we just earn these things. There's a lot of very good people out there who are hardworking and dedicated who don't have these things. God loves us. And we can see it every day. There's Every time I, I do a funeral, I, I usually sit down with the, the family and say, you know, what are some memories that you have about the, the person who's departed? And a few times I've had people say to me, you know what, I never heard mom, dad say, I love you, but you never doubted it for a minute. You never doubted it for a minute because they were always there. They're always caring for you. They're always making sure that you had what you need and that you were going to be successful. By contrast, there's a lot of people who say, I love you, I love you, I love you, but you don't see the evidence for it at all. Love is what we do. It's sacrificing to save, to help, giving our lives for somebody else. Look at the screen here with me, if you would. Let's answer this together. Why is he called God's only son when we are also God's children? Because Christ alone is the eternal, natural son of God. We, however, are adopted children of God, adopted by grace through Christ. So just like the son the actual Son of God, the natural Son of God, we are adopted into God's family and we have all the rights and privileges of the Son. We have all the rights and privileges before God that Jesus Christ has. 
because of what he did for us. Jesus came to us. He didn't just say, I love you from heaven. He came to us to save us, to be born in a manger. When you love someone, you go to them. When they're in need, particularly when they can't help themselves, you go to them to help them. You sacrifice your time, your energy, your attention. You go there and you help whatever you can do. They say that 90% of helping is just showing up. So Jesus just showing up here in our life, in our world, 90% of God's love there. Jesus showed up. He didn't just say, I love you. He showed up. Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us, which means God loves us. He showed up. In our time of need, when we were, we should have just been thrown away because we were a broken people and a broken creation, God shows up. He didn't keep his distance. He didn't just send a card. He showed up. He was here. That's God's love for us. So where do you get your love? We all need it to survive. Where do you get your love? We can get our love from a lot of different things. And all of those things, except for one, are going to disappoint us and they're going to come from people that are not perfect. But there's one love that is perfect. Just one. Let's get our love from the gift of Jesus. Jesus in the manger is God's gift of love to us. Let's unwrap this gift of love. Let's unwrap it each in ourselves and in our own lives so that we get our love from a source that is perfect and that we're not leaning on what is, what is feeble. Let's unwrap by believing in God's love. We have to believe that God actually loves us. It's easy, it's especially when, when, when you're young, you know, you see, you, you see about Jesus in the manger, you hear about it, and you sing about it, and you think, oh, that's kind of nice. You know, but, but do you see this for what it really is? Do you see that the major sacrifice that God gave here to save us? This, this, this is a major act of love here. If we, can, we can miss that unless we know what we're looking at. A cute little baby in a manger. Oh, that's kind of nice. These cute little animals in a, in a barn here. No, this is a major sacrifice that God made so that we would be saved. God loves us. And he doesn't just say it. He does it. Let's unwrap by believing that God loves us. Let's unwrap by focusing on this truth over the other illusions that are out there. There's a lot of weird ideas about what love really is out there. Let's not confuse that. And we get those messages far more often than we get this one, don't we? If you compare how much time we're, we're in the Word or thinking about what God has said versus taking in all of the other messages from the world, it's, it's quite not really a comparison. Let's, let's make sure that we're grounded in what God really has said and what love really is. In our martial arts class, something that, that I've realized and I've tried to say a few times is that if you can control your mind, you can control your body. So if we can control what we think about, the things that we dwell on, the, the truths that are of God's word, if we can concentrate on those, 
we can control how we act and how we live. Psalm 86, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Not just know it, I will walk in it. Give me an undivided heart that I might fear your name. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. I hope that we all can say that. When we look at Jesus in the manger, and think about that. God loves me. And he's here to save me from the brokenness that I experience. When you have God's love in your heart, when God's love is front and center on your mind, we don't have to impress anyone else. We don't have to feel insecure. We don't have to worry about what we're wearing to impress other people around us or the, the, we don't have to be clever to impress everybody. We don't have to achieve to impress everybody. We, we have God's approval, God's love already. If we have the approval of the creator of the universe, why should we care about other people? Why should we be jumping through hoops to try to get people to like us? God loves us in Jesus. So here's something else. Romance is a luxury. Out there, you get all kinds of messages that say that romance, having a boyfriend, girlfriend, the husband and wife, that that's like the ultimate of love. False. It is not true. In fact, that was something that I believed for a long time. It is not true. That puppy love euphoria, that's even like a drug. It's like a narcotic. People get addicted to it. So they just try to go from one to the next to the next to try to get that euphoria again and again. It's a fantasy. You're chasing a shadow. So you don't need a man to complete you. You don't need a girlfriend to complete you. Jesus was single his entire life. Never got married never had kids. He did okay. In fact, he's our ultimate example of how we are to live our lives. If you have romance through your life, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, great. Do you need it? Absolutely not. Not at all. They will not meet your every need. They will not fix all your problems. And whoever you find, they will be imperfect. They are also broken, like you are. They won't fix your problems. Jesus will. Let's make sure that we know where our love really belongs. When our need for love is met in Christ, we seek to spread it. This is what the rest of this passage is talking about. If, if we have God's love with us, then we share that because we have all of our need for love met, so we spread that around. You, you kind of can't help it. Verse, verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 21. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. God's love is not supposed to just stop with us. It's supposed to spread from us. And that's our call. And it's not like, okay, I, I have this list of things to do. No, it's more like if you know and you can dwell on what God has done for you, if you can concentrate on that, then God's love is just going to overflow from who you are. It's not going to be a list of things you have to do. Because of Christ, because of him, we will sacrifice to save, just like he did. We will lay down our lives for other people, the people near to us. So we give not just money, but our time and attention to people who are in need. And we aren't going to expect to get anything back, because that's not what it's about. So this Christmas season, 
open God's gift of love. That's to you, to me, to all of us. He is the greatest gift that meets all of our needs. Dwell on that this Christmas season. Open this gift. And let's pray together. Our Lord God in heaven, help us to to see the birth of Jesus as your ultimate act of love for us. Please don't let us miss that. Help us to find all of our needs met in what you have shown to us so that we won't seek it from other things, but that, Lord, we would find joy, peace, happiness, and love from you and who you are and what you've done for us. And we pray that we would spread that to other people. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.